Demonstrations in Hong Kong turned violent today as marchers battled with police. The protest was against cross Susie, come! ...popular with tourists and traders who buy goods in Hong Kong to resell in mainland China. The demonstration began peacefully, but clashes broke out after police used pepper spray and batons to try and disperse the crowds. Hong Kong has been the scene of a series of protests over the past month against the semi-autonomous territory's government and its relationship with mainland China. In Somalia, the Islamic extremist group Al-Shabaab killed more than 2,000 people and injured more than 50 others in an attack on a hotel overnight. The attack began with a suicide car bombing at the entrance to the building, which allowed at least three gunmen to enter the hotel, where Somali lawmakers were meeting. The battle between the Al-Shabaab gunmen and Somali security forces lasted more than 14 hours and ended when all of the attackers were shot dead. The victims of the bombing included two Americans, a prominent Somali-Canadian journalist, a Somali politician, and a U.S. agency staff member. A U.S. service member was killed in Afghanistan today. Officials have not yet released details or identified the service member. Also today, in northwestern Afghanistan, three Afghan police officers died in a gun battle with militants who attacked a government compound. Two of the militants were killed and others arrested. There was no claim of responsibility, but a spokesman for the Taliban said his group was behind the killing of the U.S. service member. Well, we got out early. ...between the U.S. and Taliban to discuss possible withdrawal of troops and an end to the 18-year war wrapped up earlier this week. Serena Williams will have to wait for her chance to tie the record for most Grand Slam singles titles. Romania's Simona Halep defeated Williams today in the women's singles finals at Wimbledon. It took only 56 minutes for Halep to win in straight sets with a final score of 6-2, 6-2. Today marked the 37-year-old Williams' third Grand Slam final loss in a row. Her last tournament win was the Australian Open in 2017. The victory was Halep's first at the All England Club. As part of our ongoing series, The Future of Food, we're taking a closer look at cell based meat. What do you think about cell based meat? about the ethics, environmental impact, and sustainability of meat production, many people are looking for alternatives. By now, you've probably heard about the surge in popularity of burgers made solely from plants. Even Burger King plans to serve one in all of its restaurants. But could it be possible to grow what amounts to real beef or chicken in labs with no animals killed in the process? And could such a process actually be sustainable? It may sound like science fiction, but Megan Johnson traveled to California, where a few companies are working to get lab-raised beef on your plate in the very near future. This report is supported in partnership with the Poster Center. In 2005, Uma Valetti was an up-and-coming cardiologist in St. Paul, Minnesota. He just finished a prestigious fellowship at the Mayo Clinic and was treating patients with serious heart conditions, all while conducting cutting-edge research. In my practice in cardiology, I started working on a clinical study that took stem cells from patients that had large heart attacks or cardiac arrest, and we would take those cells and inject them into patients' hearts to regrow the heart muscle. That led me to start thinking, can you just grow food from cells? And once the idea got into my head, it was really impossible to get it out. I can't believe Chloe. The idea of creating meat in a lab. He'd always been bothered by Look the at her. impacts of meat production. She's not tired. The others are more. It really started dawning on me that all the pieces of I'm hot. existed in the world. And we had to put it together for this. This is no mosquitoes. Growing food. Valeni walked away from his promising cardiology career and moved his family to the San Francisco Bay Area to pursue the idea of creating what's known as cell-based meat. In 2015, Valeni launched Memphis Meats, one of the first private companies in the world focused on the technology. The next year, Memphis Meats debuted its first product. Tastes like a meatball. Valeni's lab-grown meatballs take only a few weeks to produce. A beef cow, by comparison, takes around 18 months to get to market. Valeni believes his fast-growing meat could help address the issue of increasing demand. With the middle class growing around the world, global demand for meat will double by 2050, according to the UN. 
we are at a breaking point where I think if this demand for meat continues in the way it is, there just isn't enough resources for it. That's kind of why I think the crux of the whole thing requires massive innovation. Valetti also talks about one day creating healthier meats, less likely to cause the heart disease he saw in so many of his patients. Today, Memphis Meats has close to 40 employees and is working on duck and chicken, which Valetti gave me a sample of. Okay, here I go. Go for it. 